Hello there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 3-2 homework solutions on differentiability part one. For problem number one, we're finding domain continuity and differentiability for this function here. Uh, let's start with domain. So there's no breaks or discontinuities or undefined spots anywhere between negative one and two. Um, we do have solid endpoints here, so we're going to have to use brackets. So this will be bracket negative one comma two with another bracket. For part B, we want to know where the function's continuous. There are no discontinuities anywhere on here. Um, so the interval of continuity is going to be everywhere the domain is defined, actually. Um, but for continuity and differentiability, we can use parentheses. So we'll do parentheses negative one comma two close parentheses. And then for differentiability, for part C, um, we have continuity everywhere. However, we do have this cusp, which breaks the continuity of the derivative. Um, this is an undefined derivative here at x equals zero. So we actually need two intervals for the differentiability. One is going from negative one to zero, union zero to two. For problem two, we're looking at this graph-defined piecewise function. Uh, part A, the domain, this is defined everywhere. There's no open dots or missing pieces. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then for part B, continuity, there's no discontinuities on here. Um, so the continuity interval is also negative to positive infinity. For part C, differentiability, this is where we have some issues. There are cusps all over this thing. We have one at negative three, x equals negative one, x equals one, and x equals two, all those places, we're gonna have to build our intervals around those. Um, so our first interval then will be from negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to negative one, then negative one to one, one to two, and finally from two to positive infinity. For number three, we've got this interesting function to find domain continuity and differentiability on. For the domain, I'm looking for any places that are not solid on this graph. It doesn't look like there are any. Um, we have this open dot here, but there's a solid dot to fill that in. So from negative infinity to positive infinity then for the domain. For continuity, um, we definitely have a break in continuity here at x equals two. That is a jump. So we've got continuity from negative infinity comma two, and then union two to positive infinity. And then finally for differentiability, we have a cusp, or is it a, a corner? Well, it's more of a cusp either way at negative two. And then we have a discontinuity at positive two. So that means our differentiability interval is from negative infinity to negative two, union negative two to two, union two to infinity. For number four, we're finding domain continuity and differentiability for this graph. Uh, for domain, the only place where the domain breaks down, where we don't have something solid to represent us, is here on the y-axis at x equals zero, there's an asymptote. Um, so our domain then goes from negative infinity to zero, and from zero all the way to positive infinity. For part b, continuity, we have a removable discontinuity, a hole, at x equals negative two. We have an infinite discontinuity or asymptote at x equals zero. And then over here at x equals five, this is a jump discontinuity. So let's build our interval around those. We're going from negative infinity to negative two, negative two to zero, zero to five, and five to positive infinity. And then for differentiability, well, we have those discontinuities again at negative two, zero, and five. Um, we have a few other problem spots too that affect only derivatives. So here at negative one, and also here at positive two, we have cusps or corners, whichever you wanna call those. And then we also have one more issue that's harder to see, even harder to see. Here at x equals four, this um, perfectly vertical spot right here for just a little bit, this counts as a vertical tangent. So we have to build our differentiability intervals around all of these. So we're going from negative infinity to negative two for the first one, then from negative two to negative one, negative one to zero, zero to positive two, positive two to four, four to five, and finally from five 
to infinity. Whew. On this problem, we're given the graph of f of x here, and we want to know which of these statements is true. So let's just go through them one at a time and see what we can eliminate. So for statement one, they're saying f prime equals zero when x equals three. Well, let's see what's happening at x equals three. Right here, it looks like we have a cusp at x equals three, which means that f prime of three would actually be non-existent. Um, so this is a no, it can't equal zero or anything else if you have a cusp there because that's a non-differentiable spot. All right, for option two, they're saying that the slope at 2.5 is positive. So let's look at 2.5, and it looks like the graph of f is increasing on that interval. So that means that this is a yes. We have a positive first derivative there. Okay, for option three, on the interval from negative four to five, so that's from here all the way over to here, there are three values of x at which f of x is not differentiable. Well, let's uh, mark off the different non-differentiable spots and see what we can figure out here. So at x equals negative 2, we have a removable discontinuity. And at x equals 1, this is a jump discontinuity. And at x equals 3, we actually talked about this earlier. This was our cusp, which, where it's continuous but not differentiable. So that's actually three spots that are non-differentiable, which is what they said here. So that's a yes. So it looks like answer choices or options two and three are what we want here. So that would be choice D. On this problem, we're told that the limit as x approaches a of some function equals L, and L is a real number. So they're basically saying the limit exists. Based off of that, which of these has to be true? All right, so again, this statement means our limit exists at x equals a. So we're seeing if that implies that the derivative exists, the function is continuous there, the function is defined there, and the function equals the limit there. So if we can find a counterexample for some of these, that would help us eliminate some of these answer choices. So the big counterexample here, where some things don't match up but you still end up with, with a limit, is if you had a removable discontinuity at x equals a. If you had a removable discontinuity there, the limit would still exist. You'd still be heading to the same place, but pretty much nothing else would be true. Um, for example, if you have a removable discontinuity, that means that f of a doesn't even have to exist. You could just have an open dot with nothing to replace it there. So that eliminates answer choice C about f of x being defined at x equals a. If you have a removable discontinuity, that means that you're definitely not continuous, which is going to eliminate choices B and also D. I mean, B pretty much spells out we're continuous at A. D is saying the function value equals the limit, um, which implies that they both exist and that they equal each other, which is continuity and written a different way. Um, so B and D can be eliminated based off of the lack of continuity at a whole. And if we're not continuous, then our function certainly isn't differentiable at X equals A. So that eliminates answer choice A. That leaves only E, none of the above. For number 10, they're telling us the limit at x is approaching 3 is going to be 7 for some function. So which of the following has to be true? Um, so option number 1, f is continuous at x equals 3. Um, well, a limit's a good start, but it's not enough. We know for continuity, we also need the limit to equal the function value, and, and the function has to exist there to begin with. Next, f is differentiable at x equals 3. Um, well, if we don't have enough for continuity, we certainly don't have enough for differentiability, which requires continuity. So limit is not even close to being enough for differentiability. F of 3 equals 7. Well, this one seems like it ought to have a shot. Um, but here, this also breaks down. We could have a hole at this value. As long as the function is approaching 7, the closer we get to x equals 3, we still have a limit at 7. Um, so the limit's not enough for equality. It just says you're going towards 7, not necessarily getting there. Um, so none of these are good, which means choice A, none, is the best bet here. On this problem, we're told that the limit as x approaches A of some function equals the value of the function at A. We want to know which statement about the function must be true based off of this. Well, if our limit and our function value match up, um, not only do they match up, it implies they actually both exist, all of which is the definition of continuity. So this is a big yes for answer choice A. If limit equals function value, we have a function that is continuous at that spot. So you could immediately pick answer choice A and be on your merry way. 
If you want to eliminate all the other answer choices, though, let's just take a look at those just to see why they are not what we want. Um, so choice B, F is differentiable. Well, continuity is a requirement of differentiability, but it's not enough. For, so this is a no. Um, for example, a cusp would still be continuous, would still meet this condition, but you would not be differentiable there. This next one is saying for all values x, f of x equals f of a. Well, f of a is some constant. So we're basically saying the function equals the same y value no matter what. So we're saying we have a horizontal line. And this is a no. It's not necessarily true that we have a horizontal line. The limit and the function value could match up with pretty much any other continuous function like a slanted line. For this next one, the line y equals f of a is tangent to the line of f at x equals a. Um, so the way to read this is that we have uh, some horizontal line, because again, f of a is a constant, so some horizontal line tangent to our graph at a, which is basically saying f prime of a equals zero. And that's not necessarily true. f prime of a doesn't have to be zero. We could have a function where it's continuous, um, but the function's derivative is something else. The slope could be something other than zero there. And we don't even know, based off of choice b, whether f prime exists at all. Um, so we definitely don't have enough to pick choice D. And then this last one, line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph. Well, we said that the graph has to be continuous at x equals a. So if our graph is continuous, it can't have a vertical asymptote because that's a discontinuity. So we're going to say no for choice E. Continuous means no vertical asymptotes. So choice A is then the only logical answer here. For number 12, for any function f, which of the following statements must be true? If f is defined at x equals a, then the limit as x approaches a of the function equals f of a. Um, so this doesn't necessarily have to be true. We could have a jump, or we could have a hole, or some other kind of discontinuity um, that breaks this continuity statement right here. Next one. If f is continuous at x equals a, then the limit and the function value have to equal each other. Um, that is true. That is the definition of continuity, or at least part of it. Um, if f is differentiable at x equals a, then this has to be true. Um, this is also true. This, this is part of continuity. And if you have differentiability, we know you also must have continuity. So that means that options 2 and 3 are the best ones here, so that's answer choice C. On this problem, we're given the graph of f, and we want to know, given these four intervals here, where is f continuous but not differentiable? So let's just take a look at these different intervals. So interval from 0 to 1, we are continuous and differentiable on that. There's no discontinuities, no cusps or vertical tangents. So a is continuous and differentiable. We move on then, choice b, we are not continuous. We have a removable discontinuity. For choice C, from the interval from 2 to 3, we are continuous here. There's no breaks, but we have this cusp. So that means we're continuous, but not differentiable. And then for D, well, we have this uh, jump discontinuity in there, which again is going to mean we're not continuous. So we wanted continuous, but not differentiable. That's the interval that has our cusp, choice C.